Look how pale that is. Compare, I mean, that's hardly tanned, bronzed up. But look at, look at that, that's disgusting. Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. So let's be vultures again. Ned Fulmer, that geezer who's been in the news from Try Guys, has a cookbook that he co-wrote with his wife. Naturally, a lot of it didn't age well and we're going to go through that today. Interspersed with moments of me actually trying to cook some of the recipes. So there's that to look forward to. Before we get into the video, make sure you like, comment and subscribe. I hate to say it and remind you guys, but it does help out a lot and people do it more when you remind them. But first, this video is sponsored by Light Me. Light Me Fantasy Plus is a smart lighting kit that brings you a whole new experience in watching, sensing and living. With Fantasy Plus, you can easily turn your living room into a high-end, immersive, entertaining home theatre. You can also enhance your gaming experience with the interactive lighting system. Light Me supports high-quality video formats, has a music mode, is easy to install and can be controlled by an app on your phone. You can see here on my TV how the colours change with an episode of The Simpsons. Download the app on Google Play or the App Store. So how it works is you pair the Neo Sync box with any HDMI capable devices, including Apple TV, game consoles, or your laptop to transform your living room into a unique home theatre. Light Me supports 4K 60Hz and fits almost all TV screen sizes. You can also control everything via app. For a truly immersive experience, the NeoSync Box's advanced colour sync technology captures every colour pixel from your screen to synchronise into lighting that is accurate and outstanding. The Lightstrips RGBIC chip brings 16 million shades of colour in light to selectively process and display richer, brighter colours for your immersive watching experience. Voice assistants are supported, including Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant. LightMe can process up to 500 pixel dots and apply them to the light strip with ARGB LED to ensure vibrant color reproduction in sync mode. With LightMe's self-developed interactive lighting technology color sync, this kit opens up the possibility to turn your living room, bedroom and other spaces into the right atmosphere for watching a great movie, playing your favorite games or any creative entertaining purposes. Say goodbye to boring nights. Create a new experience with your loved ones for any occasion. Feel like you're at the movies while you're on your own couch. Enjoy immediate and immersive light effects that match what's happening on your screen. If you use the link in my description box below and use the special code Elise, you will get 10% off of your order. Thank you, Like Me, for sponsoring today's video. So, introduction. Dating is tough. Oh boy, who's gonna tell him, huh? It's not gotten better since you've been in a relationship for God knows how many years. It's gotten worse out there, so have fun with that, Ned. Follow my new Instagram and I might just follow you back. Relationships are about putting in the effort and trying new things. Yeah, Ned, an affair shouldn't qualify as a new thing. <laughs> As much as possible, we have tried to include a variety of dietary options and alcohol-free alternatives, but you may notice that we love pasta and cheese, especially pasta. OMG, we love pasta. In the current world of low-carb, gluten, and lactose-free options, we realize that may be a bit abnormal. No, pasta and cheese very much still is the standard in the West. You can probably get it anywhere in England. You aren't special for eating bog-standard gluten included spaghetti mate first things first stock your kitchen with some cooking essentials no wine doesn't necessarily have to go in wine glasses but if that's your choice always get more wine glasses than you think you'll need because if you're like ned you'll break about three per year yeah that's not the only thing he'll be breaking marriage vows chapter one attraction the first recipe in the book is the first thing that ned cooked for ariel corn and chicken tacos ingredients chicken chopped Corn salsa tortillas. Instructions, cook chicken, add corn and salsa, serve on cold tortilla. I was about to blow my lid at this. Where is the seasoning? What in the white people am I reading? I can say that because I am part Pakistani. <laughs> that makes me very special and different. But luckily they are just messing around here and they include a better recipe on the next page. Faster than I could yell, cash grab. Look at this picture. Look at the chutzpah on this schmuck. <laughs> They have a non-alcoholic jalapeno limeade in place of tequila, so I tried to make it. Spicy jalapeno icebreaker margarita, but obviously, as you all know, I don't drink alcohol. Okay. So, in a large mixing glass, muddle jalapeno slices with a muddle or a sp I found oh. this. You can use you that. Need to, no, you need the spikes. Muddle jalapeno slices, so... 
I think this is a jalapeno. Jalapeno slices with a muddle or a spoon. Two ounces of agave. So that is 59 mils. This is like quite a lot, huh? 59 milliliters of lime juice. That is a shocker. Look at that. That's all the ice we're getting. Hold both ends firmly and shake vigorously for five to 10 seconds. If desired, run a lime wedge around the rims of two tall glasses and salt the rim. Garnish with lime wedges and jalapeno. The stingiest bartender in the world. It looks quite nice actually. <laughs> you don't spill it over yeah. the floor. What'd you rate that one? 7.5 out of 10. 7.5. I like it, but I wish I had more ice and I wish that these were actually jalapenos because I'm not convinced. I think I got, I think I'll get gaslit by Sainsbury's. Ned, Ariel and I met in Chicago a long time ago in the prehistoric world before dating apps. Well, not that long ago, but we did meet over 10 years ago and we met, gasp, IRL. Ned, has anyone ever told you that you're annoying? You are BuzzFeed incarnate. Area, BuzzFeed incarnate. Horrible, outdated syntax and hypocrisy. That's BuzzFeed. Who else but BuzzFeed? Ariel, definitely tequila. Ned immediately started hitting on my friend, Annalise. They had a lot in common. They were both in classes at Improv Olympic and had some of the same teachers. So I comforted myself with the fact that at least she was having a good time. Ned, it was more like polite small talk, thank you very much. Hmm, who do I believe more, I wonder? No offense, but this picture is scaring me. This is my sleep paralysis demon. This is what Nietzsche was talking about when he said all that stuff about the abyss staring back. This picture is better, but I know how to improve it. Scribble Ned out. Want to know one of our favorite date night activities? Get your mind out of the gutter. It's eating dessert. Ned, I do not want to have intrusive thoughts of you having sex, so stop or I will get a restraining order. This recipe is easily veganized because they use pre-made store-bought pastry, so I tried it. I have to put my hair up now for this next one. Don't everyone rush to ask me out all at once. Flaky fruit tart. This is gonna take so long. I'm so sorry that I didn't start any of this sooner. Preheat oven. 200 Celsius. Sliced fresh peaches. See, there's a stone in the middle. How are you meant to do it? I don't get it. This is too much effort already. Three tablespoons light brown sugar. Pinch of salt. Oh, I should have saved that salt from earlier. <sighs> Quarter of a teaspoon cinnamon. Oh, this smells good. Why don't I put it in this? About that big. Cut into a large circle, but it seems a bit of a waste, right? And it's already in bye. It's already in the square. So what 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 if I just make the tart a square thing instead? Maybe if I just curl the edges in a little bit. Oh my god, I'm so bored already. I am so bored. This is so bored. Where's my headphones? I need to listen to a podcast. This is so boring. Look at the This is hard work. Oh, I'm actually a bit upset now. Mine are, mine are so thick. It just said cut them into sliced fresh peaches. Pull the edges of the pastry over the peaches to create a decorative crust. Bake for 20 minutes until golden brown, cool on a rack. So it's ready. That's burning my hands. Can <laughs> you see there's a... It's like it's an air bubble. It's got a growth. The peaches are definitely too thick. The pastry is really nice as well. It is nice. I'm going to give it a seven. On Ned's first fancy date with Ariel, he orders spaghetti with a one pound meatball and he goes on and on about how huge it is, it's as big as his head, how he had leftovers for days. And if you look in this picture, you filthy cheating liar. That is not head size, that is fist sized. One of my mammoth sized fists that is, not your puny childish hands. I could eat that in one go and get dessert. No one should trust your word on anything ever again. And I was... I was so mad about this, I was going to prove it, put my money where my mouth is. 
But cooking all the stuff that I did cook for this video was such a hassle that I didn't want to do anymore, so I didn't. But a pound of meat, I think that's about 450 grams. I could do that. Maybe I will for a future video. I could do that. Easy peasy. Whoa, look at this. It's a crazy fourth wall break as I, from the future, tell you to check out my merch. Whoa, I love what Marvel did here. Just kidding around, here is my merch store. Friendly reminder that my merch does indeed exist at ayclothing.tmill.com. Ethical, sustainable, organic, delicious. Here we have the products, perfect for the Elise Yeezy fan, especially in the run up till Christmas. Get yourself a nice jumper, tote bag, die cry hate line, limited edition, still going on, should be replaced by maybe a Christmas limited edition merchandise item if I can think of one. And there's a puzzle set, people love puzzles, why not get someone to puzzle for Christmas? It's only two months away guys, come on. And here's more of the items of clothing, get yourself a don't care, didn't ask jumper. This is me to Marvel. I'm just going to send them this. I don't care and I didn't ask. Anyway, check out my store, ayclothing.tml.com. Questions for a first date. What is the thing you love most about yourself? Is this a first date or the Spanish Inquisition? Imagine being British and trying to answer this question sincerely. Well, I love my crippling alcoholism, my passive aggressiveness, my tolerance for queuing. This book is too American for me. What do you do all day? What an aggressive line of questioning. What do you do all day, Ned, besides cheat on your wife? Do you have any pet peeves about other people? Yeah, you. Ideas for how to meet people. The dating landscape changes all the time. Well, you're gonna find out about that, aren't you? The pandemic has made casual dating an uncertain and often dangerous endeavor. But a year ago, it seemed like you couldn't go to a bar without checking Tinder or Bumble first. Don't get us wrong. Dating apps are a great way to meet people. How would either of them know this? They've been together for a decade. Or did Ned just out himself? Why are they speaking as though they're such authorities on dating app? Take your eyes off of your phone. Oh, my phone's all the way over there. No. Hope that was worth it. Advice for finding lasting love from a couple that's been married for like ever. Ooh. Understand your own needs and be upfront with them. Do you need a lot of space in a relationship? A lot of affection? How do you deal with conflict? Are there deal breakers that you can't tolerate like cheating or smoking? That is rich, isn't it? Look for partnership in addition to romance. Take it from a couple that has been happily married for longer than YouTube has been around. Romance can ebb and flow when life gets hectic, but a solid partnership based on respect, trust, communication, this is hurting my heart, support and fun is what you can build up both as individuals and lead, lead to a happier, more satisfying life. In my head, I just sounded like Boris Johnson then. There is a, there's a video on his Instagram congratulating students who are about to take tests and he's like, hello everyone to everyone doing their GCSE today. And it's so unnecessary and all the comments are like GCSE and that lives rent free in my head. After we ate cereal, there would always be a little bit of milk left over. Ned always liked to drink his, but Ariel found that a little icky. One morning after Ned drank his leftover milk, Ariel asked him if he would drink hers, a funny game that she would play of her dad and her sister. For her family, the answer would always be a resounding, ew, no. But for Ned, it was a, uh, okay. To which Ariel replied, ew, what? I wasn't serious, but it was too late. Ned had already quaffed her leftovers. It's still a story Ariel likes telling to this day because Ned had left such a lasting, if somewhat gross impression. So you're telling me that Ned enjoys sloppy seconds. Fitting. Chapter two. Don't know what the title is. Pfft. Ned. The weekend eventually was a success because everyone got to know Ariel and Ariel got to see a more nuanced view of my friends. Ariel. It's certainly an unforgettable first impression, but I did learn that you are fiercely loyal to those who you're close with. Clearly not. Smashed roast potatoes recipe. I did this one. I weren't impressed, but I think I boiled them for too long. So, and despite what I say in this clip, I did eat them afterwards and they were fine. I think it was my fault it went wrong. <sighs> you win this round, Ned Former. Smashed roast potatoes. These are addictive. Seriously, take this as a warning. <clears throat> Two pounds of baby yellow potatoes and it doesn't say if you have to, um, I'm not peeling them. Actually, they're smashed roast potatoes. No, I'm not doing it. It doesn't specify peel them, I'm not doing it. Piss off. Boiled potatoes. Do I have to wash the potatoes? <clears throat> Boiled potatoes, salted. So this got a boil. Bottom of a clean 
coffee mug. Good one. Good one, Ned. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Ruined his marriage. Ruining my life. Are you joking? <laughs> that is embarrassing. Look at that. That is embarrassing. Right. Done with that. Drizzle with olive oil. Season with salt, pepper, granulated garlic. Drizzle with olive oil, season with salt, pepper, granulated garlic and rosemary and toss well to coat. They will fall apart if I do that. They're already like mince... Stupid. Roasted potatoes, crispy. Da, 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 da. See you in a bit. So that's what these look like. The garlic all burnt. I'm probably not going to try this. I give it a zero out of 10. Can't be bothered anymore. Party ideas, double date. Invite your bestie or theirs and their... Bo? I think it's pronounced Bo. Over for an intimate double date. For an established couple, it's a great way to pick their brain on how they got where they are and tell stories of their early courtship. God, this sounds miserable. I would rather sit at home alone in the dark, staring blankly at a wall than do that. Fizzy Paloma non-alcoholic drink. Tried this next, didn't really like it. Actually, do you want to have a Fizzy Paloma non-alcoholic? It's like this grapefruit juice-esque drink. Do you want to try that? Okay. Combine agave, lime juice, and grapefruit juice in a mixing glass. So 60 mils agave, lime juice. You wanna try some? I don't think I like grapefruit, so I don't think I'm gonna like it. Grapefruit's too bitter for me, I don't like it. I don't really like grapefruit because it's too bitter. Like the aftertaste, I don't really like it, so I give that a three out of 10. I prefer this jalapeno thing. Sightseeing in China. Look at how annoyed the lady in the background of this picture is. Honestly, same. Chicken and potato hand pies. Makes eight hand pies, inspired by a traditional English meat pie lunch. What the fuck? is a hand pie. Do you mean a pastry, you uncultured swines? They had a cobbler in the book and I never bothered doing that. Moving swiftly on. What to bring to a party. Ned's personal standby in those early days and still now is a bottle of alcohol. You can never go wrong with a bottle of kinda good red or white. Well, I can't have any of that because of the aforementioned raging alcoholism. So thanks for nothing, Ned. So much for inclusivity. This book, there's a lot of stuff about cooking and hanging out with people and bringing people food that you've made and whatever. And I'm feel, I feel like I'm getting an insight into the lives of real human beings, the hidden lives of real humans. I never did stuff like this when I lived in London because my life was working six days a week. Yeah, six days a week. Not being paid living wage or London wage. So hardly going out for meals or cooking properly because all my money went on ridiculous rent and then bills and then spending my meager leftover cash on, you know, binging cocaine just to feel something. These people go on nights out on our home by 10, 30, 11 p.m. after having three cocktails max. I'd go out and go home at 8 a.m. to quickly spray on some dry shampoo to go straight to work, still gurning. Sometimes I wouldn't even get home for that and I would just go straight to work and I always carried around dry shampoo and a spare toothbrush and toothpaste. That is, that is horrible. Once I opened up a Monzo account with a 700 pound overdraft just to spend it on drinking drugs that night. Ned and Ariel are actual human beings. 
<laughs> like they do things like potluck. I've never done a po- what? I've never done it. My boyfriend's done potlucks with like his workmates. I've. He's a real human being, and I'm not. I don't know why he likes me. My life has been disgusting. I feel like with Ned and Ariel, I wouldn't know how to interact with them. It's like a different species. I feel like I'm at the zoo, but I'm the one trapped in the cage. Why are my eyes watering? Ned, I entered the party and it is wild. Bottles were flowing. We were in our early 20s. I bet there was two bottles of WKD. <laughs> Crying. Oh my God. Mum, don't listen to this next bit. <laughs> There was this horrible alcohol called Aftershock. And one time I mixed some of that with a bottle of Diet Coke, one of the 500 mil ones, took it into school to drink during math class. <laughs> By that point, my math teacher knew I was a lost cause. <laughs> the boy next to me knew what I was doing. And the math teacher was like, has anyone got any medicine? Like what's that medicinal smell? Because Aftershock was that disgusting. Dust. It was, it, I think it was the licorice flavour as well. Rank, so rank. And the boy next to me looked at me and laughed. So I was always just doing quirky and wacky things like that, like cutting myself an emo fringe in the middle of class or bringing it up. I'm not an actual human being. These people are. This book is so unrelatable to me, but I kind of love it. It's like, it's like, it's like they're a periscope into actual people's lives. Not me, a little gremlin wrapped in human skin. Chapter three, why are you mad? How long have you got? You might also get wound up sometimes, sometimes when things aren't going quite the way you expected or you find yourself thinking your partner isn't who you thought they were. These feelings are a little more difficult to deal with because there isn't a specific problem to deal with. Rather, it's a general feeling of disappointment. For example, when she was in her 20s, Ariel had a boyfriend who was routinely rude to servers, but it was never so obvious on a day-to-day -day basis that she felt she could bring it up to him. I like how there's this quite pedestrian example of how a previous boyfriend was a bit of a knobhead, which now pales in comparison to Ned cheating on his wife and children with a co-worker for over a year. The grass ain't always greener. Sometimes the grass is dead. At the end of the day, don't be afraid to walk away if the relationship isn't working or you'll find yourself compromising on your core beliefs. Oh God. Lime and spicy arugula. <laughs> so we went from that deep relationship chat to, ooh, salad. Adjust the solution to help you get through a difficult conversation. For us personally, a little bit of gin never helps, so it's time to deal with our issues head on. Refreshing and offbeat, this drink helps us see things from a different perspective. Great advice, get drunk to deal with your issues. Fantastic, thank you, Ned. If you really wanna see something from a different perspective, take LSD, you mundane normal people. <laughs> I mean, I've not done straight hallucinogens because I clearly, I think I would have gone into full blown psychosis and never come out of it. But I've heard from people whose brains are like mentally well, hallucinogens can help. See, I don't need hallucinogens to be able to see things from other people's perspective. I just got a big imagination. So I can always, I don't agree with anyone else ever, but I can understand how people get to the decisions they make. Cause I'm just that big brained. <laughs> I'm just that empathetic and into, I'm not an empath. Maybe I am. Anyway, they had a vegan dish in the book and I didn't bother to make that cause it was pasta. I'm not that fussed about pasta, you know? I like spaghetti bolognese. I make a really good spaghetti meat-free bolognese, obviously. I make a really good one with my mum's special recipe. But pasta, a lot of the time, I have to really be in the mood because otherwise it's like pasta, hear me out, hear me out, hot take. Pasta is just bread, but a different version because bread, flour, yeast, other stuff, pasta, flour, sometimes eggs, but a lot of store-bought pasta, the dry one anyway, the dry pastas, are all naturally vegan because they're made of like durum wheat and that's it. So you're basically just eating a different type of bread, hot bread. I would rather have a baguette than have, I don't know, tagliatelle. Fight me on this. But I do like spaghetti, but then you can't eat spaghetti or linguine without getting like loads of stuff on your chin. Well, maybe you guys can, but I am clearly a child. Anyway. While we don't recommend having a difficult discussion after a night of drinking, sometimes a cocktail can cool us off just enough to hear what the other person is saying. Ned will offer to mix some drinks if we have something difficult to talk about. Maybe because he's feeling guilty? Question mark. Feeling guilty, huh? Wonder what about? Mmm, cookie dough bites. <laughs> That's what I wrote. I made these and I like, wasn't that impressed with them. They needed, they needed a bit more salt. Eight tablespoons 
or one stick of unsalted butter. What the hell does that mean? Oh, that's quite a lot of butter actually. I didn't realize 64 grams. This granulated sugar probably has like bits of coffee in it. Ah, vanilla extract. Two teaspoons. It's quite a lot actually. Um, use a wooden spoon. Don't tell me what to do. Combine butters, sugar, etc. One cup all purpose flour. Half a teaspoon kosher salt. I don't have that. Seven. These are done. It's just, it's meant to be cookie dough. You know how, yeah, well, it's not raw because there's no eggs in it. There's no dairy or salmonella. anything. There's no salmonella. <clears throat> yeah, you meant to freeze it, but there's no room in my freezer. I'm gonna try one now. No. It does taste like sugar. I'd rather just have some cookies. Anyway, all couples argue. It's an important part of a healthy relationship to voice your feelings and hear your partners in return. That's why I argue with everyone because I am the pinnacle of health. What really matters is the way you argue. Conflicts don't have to be emotionally distressing or difficult. Here are our tips for how to have healthy fights with your partner and use disagreements to strengthen your relationship. Why should I take any of this relationship advice on board from a man who so thoroughly nuked his own marriage? For Ned, this recipe actually started out as a personal scientific experiment to cook the perfect ribeye. Ariel doesn't eat beef, but she did promise that when Ned was eating the best steak of his life, she would take a bite just to experience it with him. Wow, imagine compromising your morals for a bloke and then he goes and cheats on you anyway. Couldn't be me. Ariel would devour, then use their amazing bread to sop up the sauce. You may have noticed that Ariel loves bread and pasta. Who the hell doesn't like bread? <laughs> Even the gluten intolerant people like bread so much that they created a way to be able to eat it without their stomach shutting down. Everyone likes bread. The way this book is written is annoying to me because you might as well have said, you may have noticed that Ariel enjoys breathing. She loves intaking oxygen and expelling CO2. Chapter four. Ariel loves the saltiness of the tuna and the olives. We almost named our first child Oliver because Ariel loves olives so much. Dad, why is my brother called Oliver? Because your mother loves olives so much. Oh, okay. Thanks, dad. No problem. Bestiality. Stupid, stupid. I had a more PG version, which was no problem, salt and chili tofu, because that's my favorite, one of my favorite dishes. But I thought the bestiality one was funny. Some things are worth compromising for, dot, dot, dot. Look at that ominous ellipsis. They had a California Waldorf salad that made me think of American Psycho, but didn't bother to make it. Chapter five, commitment. <sighs> Why is Ned's entire life aged terribly? Serves him right for, for monetizing every aspect of his relationship with someone. Serves him right. There's a section attempting to school me about spices and what spices to use. <laughs> okay, Ned. They list coriander a lot. I happen to be one of those people, them people who genetically interpret coriander's taste as soap. It is a genetic problem. It's a real thing. And I am fed up of not having my genetic abnormality catered to throughout the entire world. Once I asked this restaurant near to me for a falafel wrap with no coriander and the people put extra coriander with it. My boyfriend likes coriander and he even he was like, what's happened here? This is way too much. Also thick, we've got, huh? You wouldn't do that to the lactose intolerant if someone was like, hey, can you make sure this doesn't have milk? Otherwise I will shit my brains out. You wouldn't do that. In fact, you have lacto-free options and gluten-free options, et cetera, et cetera, at restaurants, but you don't have coriander-free options. Coriander is usually put in guacamole or tomato salsa or lots of Asian dishes will incorporate it, et cetera, et cetera. They'll take it off the top if you're like, can I not have it as a topping? But if it's incorporated in, tough shit basically. It's the standards. I feel that my genetics should be taken more seriously than the lactose intolerant. This is a nuclear take. Hear me out, hear me out. Hold on. The lactose intolerant right now, we're about to furiously type in my comment section. Hold on, because here's the thing. I know that you're drinking milk right now. 
or eating ice cream or having a milkshake or whatever. Every single person I know with lactose intolerance says fuck it and just eats ice cream anyway. They will deal with the furious diarrhea a day later. <sighs> I'm absolutely gonna get one or two people in the comment section being like, oh, well, I can't, well this isn't aimed at you, all right. No, every single lactose intolerant, intolerant person that I've met does this. Granted, there are gonna be outliers, okay. My point is, is they are not taking their intolerance that seriously. Meanwhile, I'm out here having to eat a burrito with guacamole in it that has hints of dove soap. I've had enough. I wanna be taken more seriously in society, okay? It's literally not my fault, it's my genetics. Long-term relationships are comfortable. That's why we love them, but it's easy to slip into a rut if you're not careful. You end up arguing over silly things like dishes or whose turn it is to walk the dog. You find yourself doing things out of habit or boredom. We had to work really hard to make sure we still acted romantically around each other even after 10 years of marriage and date nights are a really big part of that. Yeah, so if Wednesday night was date night, what was Thursday night? Infidelity night? Ned joking around on a night out. Wow. What a comedy show. He's a real live at the Apollo. I can see why he has friends at SNL on bread. It's a blend of art and science, just like me, like Urkel. Bread making mixes the precision of a scale and flower measurements, like Urkel. Like my early days working in a chemistry lab with the touch and feel of reading a sourdough starter's consistency, just like when I'm on an improv stage or making unscripted YouTube videos. You think about yourself way too much, mate. Maybe that was part of the problem, huh? After word. Love in the kitchen takes many forms. And if there's one thing we hope you take away from this book, it's to make a commitment to cooking and eating with the people you love. Whether it's with our recipes or experimenting with your own, there's no better way to fall in love than through the experiences we share and the food we eat. How am I gonna pronounce this? Scream, pig squealing. That's what heavy metal people do. Oh my God. Anyway, and while this isn't a cookbook about kids, we have a couple of kiddos now and there's refocus on mindfulness on what we consume. So here's the thing. This book was published in September, 2021. I know via their Instagram that their youngest is still a baby. There is a very solid chance that he was already being a filthy cheat whilst writing this same book about how important love and connection and trust and communication and food is the swine. From those early days dating in Chicago to getting married to moving to Los Angeles, our recipe list has evolved and our palates has changed. But one thing that hasn't is that feeling of connection. When we share a meal together, no matter what else is going on in our lives, we retreat to that familiar place of connecting with each other. The whole rest of the world fades away. And for that moment, you and your loved one are the only people in the world taking the first bite of a new adventure together. Oh yeah, what a cop out. I'm gonna eat some good food and forget that I'm shagging my coworker. Anyway, that is all for today's video. That is the end of that book. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Thank you so much to Like Me for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you check out my podcast channel, my third channel. My third channel I should have up, maybe at the same time as this, maybe in the next few days, the fuller length version of me trying out Ned Fulmer's recipes. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.